G'day, Neil here from Player One Sim Gear, and this is the five most important things you need to consider before purchasing the Pimax Crystal. Let's go. Number one, setup and stability. Look, there's been some reviews coming out in the last couple of weeks, particularly from Will at Boosted Media, saying that the main reason that he was unable to recommend the Pimax Crystal is because he had some challenges with the setup and the stability of running the device. And that's not a knock on Will or Bradley or any of those creators. I love their work. I'm a huge fan. My experience has been the complete opposite of that. So we are not support. We're not uh, sponsored by Pimax in any way, shape or form. We had to buy this headset. We didn't get it supplied to us for review purposes or anything like that. We sell a range of VR headsets on Player One. So we're not incentivized in any way to recommend the Crystal over any other headset. But I can honestly tell you, this has been the easiest and the most seamless setup and uh, configuration of a VR headset that I've had in years. This device plugged in straight away. Now we did have an issue, and I mentioned it in the last video, around our 3080 Ti, and it didn't recognize the additional display port when I had the triple monitors set up. That was an issue with the graphics card. It's not related to the crystal at all. Once I worked out that I needed to unplug one of the monitors, then the, the setup for the crystal went smoothly after that. From the setup of the software through to the configuration of the device and then setting up in both DCS, Microsoft Flight Simulator, iRacing and Assetto Corsa as well. All of those titles, it's been absolutely out of the box, plug and play, ready to go. I've been able to tweak the device settings. I've been able to configure it. There was some things like um, a couple of application cra crashes that I experienced. Microsoft Flight Simulator crashed once or twice when I tried to change too many settings at one time. But again, minor things and I got those crashes with every other headset as well. Fundamentally speaking, the Pimax Crystal has been an absolute joy to set up for me. It's been a joy to configure and it's been, I've had no problems tweaking the settings and playing around with different things in the OpenXR toolkit. It was really easy setting up the Pimax plugin for OpenXR. All of it just happened straight out of the box. So what I would say is when it comes to stability and when it comes to the ease of setup and the configuration of the device, individual results may vary. Do not take necessarily what you see in a couple of key reviews, people saying that they've had challenges as being any way, shape or form representative of what you may experience. We have had absolutely no problems. And as we see more and more units starting to arrive with people from the pre-order list, we're seeing more and more people commenting on the forums and on Reddit that they are having no problems either, that their devices are plug and play. They turn them on, no dramas at all, and they're thoroughly enjoying them. So when it comes to number one, stability and the ease of setup, I would say be aware that your results may absolutely vary from what you've seen on some of the other reviews. You may have challenges, but if you do, there are absolutely a bunch of forums and communities out there willing to help you and support you, either on Discord or on Reddit or on the you can message us directly if you've got any challenges and the support team at the Pimax are fantastic as well. I know there's been some questions around Pimax support in the past. I think they've really changed that up and what we're seeing now is a really good experience and thoroughly representative of a company that I think is doing all the right things. Number two, the comfort and weight of the device. What I would say on this one is that the initial gasket that comes with the device is not the best. The, the, it just causes the, the, the crystal to not sit as well, particularly I mean on my face, and again, individual face shapes, results may vary, but for me, switching to the comfort gasket was the key. I recommend that Pimax should include the comfort gasket on the device when they ship them because it is a big, big improvement over the default gasket that comes with it. So first thing I'd recommend is when you take your crystal out of the box, swap it over to the comfort gasket. What you'll find is it just sits the, the crystal really nicely above your eyes, sort of on your forehead, and the device is actually really well balanced. So again, some people have commented that they're very large or that they are heavy. You, you don't notice that. The way it's balanced with the battery at the back and the comfort gasket sort of look, putting the load across the above your eyes, very, very quickly you'll find that you don't even notice that the headset's on in terms of it doesn't break your immersion. After long periods of time, I've had five or six hour sessions now using the headset and had absolutely no problems with comfort. And probably the, the key for me is in other headsets, I always use them for flight simming where I could pause or I could you know take the headset off from time to time to give my face a bit of a break. But I didn't want to use it for sim racing where I'll race in a one, two, even three hour long races. And I always felt that VR wasn't the right experience for me there because the level of comfort of the headset wasn't suitable. 
I'm now changing my view entirely. I'm 100% now using the Pimax Crystal for racing and eye racing, and I'm gonna be using it for my league races because not only is it super comfortable to wear, but it's super well balanced. And as we'll get to one of the later points, the clarity makes it 100% worthwhile. So what I would say on comfort is don't stress about that at all. This device is super comfortable. It's very well weighted and it doesn't feel overly heavy. Number three, do you need a GPU upgrade? Does this thing need a 40 series card to run? The answer is absolutely no. I'm using a 3080 Ti and this crystal runs perfectly. Not only in fact did I find that it was super smooth, I actually improved frame rates in DCS and Microsoft Flight Simulator using the OpenXR plugin and the OpenXR toolkit because I was able to turn off some of the features in there which I needed in order to get the view quality up on the uh, HP Reverb G2 that I came from. I was able to turn them off because of the level of clarity and the view quality on the crystal. So not only did I gain some frames, but it was perfectly smooth and I've had no issues once I landed on you know the, the normal sort of configuration tweaks that you'd make in game and in the toolkit itself. So I did think going into getting the Pimax Crystal that I was going to need to you know maybe just make do with the 3080 Ti for a while but that I would need to be looking to upgrade within a few short months to the 30 uh, so a 40 series in order to get the most out of it. 100% changed my mind on that. I will be maintaining and sticking with the 3080 Ti and the Pimax Crystal. It's a great combination and it works really well. Number four, the battery. There's a bunch of reviews out there as well saying that the problem with the Pimax Crystal is the battery and that that is something that the design and the way that the the chips require more power than they can get from the USB connection and so therefore the fact that even when in PC VR mode that the battery runs down and has to be replaced that that's a fundamental problem and it's going to ruin the VR experience it really doesn't I'm a PC VR guy so I always use it sitting down for simulators either racing or flying it's very rare that I'm ever going to go beyond four hours in a single VR session but in the event that I do the Pimax Crystal battery change process isn't that bad it's fine I mean I do agree that they, they need to improve the mechanism, the way the batteries clip in, and I'm sure that'll come in a future iteration. It's an obvious small improvement, but it's actually not really an issue because I simply use the USB-C port on the side when I'm not using the VR headset during the day. So if I've used it for perhaps for an hour, immediately I get, I get a charging boost. And usually within a couple of hours, the, the battery will be fully charged again. I reached out to Pimax and asked if they were comfortable with us using this side port for charging. They've come back and said it's no problem for short periods of time, but they wouldn't want us to use a, an additional power point coming into the side port for long periods of time. So because there is the potential of overcharging the battery, which could cause damage to the battery itself. So what I've done there is I just don't do it overnight. So I will, when I'm using it during the day, leave it charged in and plugged in in the side, the additional power point coming in there, and then I take it out at night. Again, not a big factor, not an issue, and it's meant that I actually haven't had to change the battery on my device any time in the last week. The, the new power pack that's coming, and shout out to Pimax again, they didn't need to make that a free addition for everyone who's buying a crystal at the moment to get the, the, the new USB hub for free. Again, a bunch of other manufacturers would have put that out as a paid add-on. The fact that it's coming out for free, the fact that they're actively sending them out to people, and that's gonna improve the battery life anywhere from, they're saying from up to six to even eight hours, that's fantastic. And again, I have zero need to change the battery just using the, the process I'm using at the moment, the amount that I play. The, again, individual results will vary. You may be really used to doing four or five hour VR sessions, maybe even six hour VR sessions in a row. I feel like most people and most of us will use the VR session for an hour or two at the most. You can simply plug in a, a PowerPoint to the side, boost the battery until your next come on. Overall, the battery's not really been a drama for me, and it's certainly not something that I would consider to be a major detrimental factor as to whether you should consider getting the Pimax Crystal. VR is first and foremost defined by one key aspect, and that is immersion. The reason people spend money on VR headsets, the reason we strap these things to our heads when we're in a simulator, is because of how it makes us feel in terms of the way it immerses us into the simulator itself. Be it sitting in the cockpit, be it looking out the window and the sense of height, be it the sense of speed, the ability to spot the apexes going into a corner, be it just looking around the cockpit and feeling like you're in the car or you're in the aircraft. And all of those things come down to how clearly the headset reproduces the environment around you, both the, both the, the close-up, so the dials and on the, in the cockpit itself, but also the horizon, the activity outside, the apexes, the track, the trees, all of the things around you as well. 
And what the Pimax Crystal does, more than any other headset on the market, is it immerses you more accurately into the environment within your simulator. And let's talk field of view for a second. When I jumped into iRacing and then also into Assetto Corsa with the Pimax Crystal, I was immediately really impressed by the level of field of view, particularly relative to the HP Reverb. And I wondered why I felt so comfortable with the Crystal and then it occurred to me. Motorbikes. I'm a motorbike rider and I've spent any number of countless hours with one of these things strapped onto my head navigating traffic. And within no time at all when you're wearing one of these, you don't even notice that there is in fact some restricted field of view out of the sides. The key differentiator for the field of view in the Pimax Crystal that makes such a difference is the level of clarity right the way across the visible field of view. And that is what ultimately defines for me the level of immersion and then also the uh, it really made a difference in terms of I don't feel any nausea at all, like no motion sickness in the slightest using the Crystal in either the flight or the sim world and I believe that that is because of the level of clarity. I don't get much motion sickness but using an, after about 40 minutes to half an hour in iRacing on the Reverb G2, I would start to feel a little bit heady, a bit lightheaded, a little bit weird. And I realized that it was because ultimately I'm focused on the very narrow field of view that is the, the focal point and my peripheral vision isn't getting the signals that it's used to getting in terms of the level of clarity that it's used to. And that ultimately would give me a bit of a lightheaded feeling. And I know for many that translates to outright motion sickness or nausea. The level of clarity right the way across the field of view on the Pimax Crystal is a key differentiator. If you have struggled with motion sickness or again becoming lightheaded after feeling after time in VR with other headsets, I think the Pimax Crystal will be a huge improvement for you because the inputs coming into your brain from both your 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 core vision and your peripheral vision, they line up and they're getting the same level of detail and the same level of clarity coming in and that makes all the difference. When it comes to VR, clarity is everything. It is more important than any of the other aspects that people talk about. And I know that Pimax hasn't been perfect in the past in the way that they have engaged with their customers. Perhaps they've come to market too quickly on some of their products. You know, they've been working it out as they go along. They're a young company. But what they have done with the Pimax Crystal is they have brought a level of clarity and immersion to a consumer grade VR headset that has just fundamentally not existed in the past. If you are a VR fan, if you are serious about simulators, then the Pimax Crystal is absolutely the best simulator headset available on the market today. And it is down singly to the level of clarity and the quality of the visual. Of course, it's not without its challenges, I'm sure. And in your own individual results, you may find that there are some diff difficulties getting it set up and getting it working on your favorite simulator but it is absolutely worth it. You might well be like myself and have absolutely no problems at all and just be able to basically plug and play and then some minor configuration tweaks and you'll have the device working perfectly for you. You may find it's a really stable experience as I have and you may well find that like me, you just cannot take the smile off your face when you're sitting in a car or sitting in an aircraft with the Pimax Crystal on. This device is a game changer for VR. It is making VR more immersive. It has absolutely changed my approach to VR. It has moved me away from my triples and I will be using the Pimax Crystal for my everyday sim racing now as well as my sim flying. And I thoroughly recommend this piece of kit. Thank you once again for checking out our video. Please do all the usual like and subscribe. It means the world to us. We'd love it if you'd leave a comment below. Let us know what you think. Let us know if you're having any challenges or like us, if you've had a basically flawless Pimax Crystal experience so far. We look forward to hearing from you and we will see you next time. Thank you.